Hello, this is astrologer coach Sonia Francis and today we're going to be talking about the upcoming new moon in 10 degrees of Pisces, uh, which will be on March 1st at 3 a.m. East Coast time in the U.S., which is also New York time, or 12 a.m. Uh, West Coast time in the U.S., which is also L.A. time. Now, the new moon, of course, is a beginning of a new moon cycle, which means that we're getting to set new moon intentions again. Uh, but we'll get to all of the details of that at the end of this video. Now let's first talk about the Pisces energy and what that entails and what that means. Now Pisces is all about our intuition, it's about our imagination, it's about inspiring ourselves and others, uh, tapping into possibility and also tapping into the energies all around us and, and getting a sense for how we're all connected and how everything is interconnected and how energy is just the thing that, that connects us with everything around us. Uh, it's also about uh, boundaries, dissolving boundaries. Now, anything that is uh, limiting in our lives, that limits our soul from full expression and full fulfillment of what the soul came here to do, we're needing to dissolve those boundaries and any kind of lower vibrational energies that are holding us back right now. So anything to do with fear or doubts that we have in our lives, we can dissolve those right now, old patterns that are no longer serving us, and also letting go of, of lower vibrational energies like resentment or guilt or shame or, or things like that, like just, just kind of transcending old programming. So this is a really great month to kind of let go of all these things. And, you know, of course, Pisces is the last sign of the zodiac before spring begins. So it's the last sign of winter. So we really are going to the depth of, of, of winter and we're letting go now of that season so that we can start something new uh, when the new moon in Aries begins, right, uh, which is uh, 28 days from now. Now, so the Pisces energy is very much an energy that helps us tap into our spirituality, into our creativity, and uh, it's very much about just unplugging and listening deep into your heart and soul, listening to that intuition inside, allowing for your feelings to flow, and really uh, being with what is and just allowing life to unfold in front of us. So it's really also about tapping into our own divinity within. And we can do that uh, through several ways. We can do that through meditation. We can do that through being in nature and listening to nature, listening to music, uh, dancing, um, energy healing work, dream work, creative writing, any kind of art, and just being being with our intuitive self in a sort of feeling sense and just feeling our way through life. Now, because Neptune, which is the ruler of Pisces, is so close to the new moon, and Chiron is on the other end of that as well, we're really getting this, this this oneness energy and this needing to slow things down and, and taking some extra rest and having some extra quiet time and really healing uh, our uh, relationship that we have to, to God, to the universe, to our higher selves. This is very important. So as best as, best as we can, it, it really serves us this lunar month to be extremely kind to ourselves, to slow things down a little bit, and to really surround ourselves with a lot of love and with a lot of loving energy. Now, the other thing with this new moon is that there's a lot of planets that, that are shifting and changing directions at the time of the new moon or right, right around the time of the new moon. The first one is right before the new moon becomes exact, which is Mercury, the planet of communication. And so here we're getting a chance to really pay attention to our inner dialogue that we've had for the past three weeks and how can we uh, bring all the visions that we have for the future now to the world and how can we communicate and share that in a, in a way that really resonates with ourselves and other people. <clears throat> Now, the other planet that's going direct, I mean, that's uh, stationing at the time of the new moon is Mars. Mars is stationing, and whenever a planet stations, of course, that energy is really in our faces. 
Um, and so with the Mars retrograde that's starting on March 1st as well, for the next two and a half months, we're getting an opportunity to reassess our relationships of all kinds, including the one to ourselves, to nature, to this planet, to everybody else in our lives, all the people in our lives, and to really see, you know, what have we been doing since uh, the end of December and what actions have we been taking since then and are, do we need to redo some of the actions? Do we need to reassess what we've been doing? Do we need to renegotiate some of the things that we've talked about with people? Um, and, um, you know, are we, um, are we really in alignment with all these things that have been occurring and happening for these past couple of months? So this is, this is what we're getting to do during the time Mars is retrograde in Libra. And um, we're definitely needing to go within and tap into our own inner assertiveness. We need to tap into our own inner strength during the, uh, the Mars retrograde. And uh, this is a great time to really uh, continue doing some of the things we've already started. Um, the, these past couple of months and to investigate anything anything new that's popping up to just kind of investigate and see how we would like to have that play out in the future. So it's not a great time to start anything brand new, but it is a great time, however, to, to continue something or to investigate something. So it's kind of a preparation time, right? It's kind of like we're in a, in a time frame where we're, we're not quite... Um, we're not quite there yet to zoom ahead full full tilt, but we're really preparing ourselves for the for something new to occur. And so, what you can ask yourself is, what am I getting ready for? You know, how can I best prepare myself for what's to come at the end of May? Because uh, Mars will go direct again on May nineteenth. All right. Now, the other planet that's uh, changing direction is Saturn. Saturn will come to a halt a day after the new moon and will be retrograde until the end of July. And so during that retrograde phase in Scorpio, we are definitely getting a chance to see what we're truly committed to. And it, are there some things that we really don't want to be committed to anymore? So we're getting to tap into this uh, maturity process more from an internal level. And we're really getting to see, like, what do we need to um, manifest? You know, what do we want to manifest? What do we want to take responsibility for? What can we take responsibility for? Uh, and um, and what... Um, um, what are we? What are we truly committed to in our lives right now? So uh, for the next five months during that retrograde phase, we're definitely getting a chance to to look into all of that. Now Jupiter is the last planet that's also changing directions. It's slowing down at the time of the new moon, and it's coming to a halt a week after the new moon, and it's going direct. Actually, it's been retrograde since November of last year. And so the, the things that we can ask ourselves when Jupiter goes direct uh, is what did we discover about our ability to learn and grow and, and move to a new level uh, uh, in our experience with life? And, and do we have a better understanding of our inner wisdom and how to access that inner wisdom right now? Uh, and... Um, and how can these, these discoveries that we've made these past couple of months since November, how, how, can, how does that change how we can live in the world now? So we're going to definitely feel a boost of optimism and possibility that comes in when Jupiter goes direct. So use everything that you've learned in these past several months that have to do with your own personal growth and your own spiritual growth and, and your growth around uh, nurturement and feminine and, and family and home. All of these things, uh, bring them into the world now and, and let, let it all unfold in a, in a, in a beautiful way in your, uh, in your, in your life. Um, so uh, let's talk a little bit about um, intention settings, shall we? Now, the intentions are great to do right after the new moon has become exact, and you want to make the intentions in alignment with anything that we just talked about in terms of the Pisces energy. Um, and uh, the best time to set intentions is 
uh, we want to do it after the new moon becomes exact and not during a moon void of course phase. So the best time this month would be right after 3 a.m. Uh, on March 1st, that's uh, East Coast time, uh, until 6 a.m. on March 2nd. And then there will be a moon void of course and then you can set attentions again uh, at 10.40 a.m. on March 2nd until 3 a.m. on March 3rd. So all of this is East Coast time and New York time. So if you do live in a different time zone, please feel free to Google the time zone converter uh, on the internet and then just plug in those time zones for New York and then put your own town or place where you live. And then it will give you uh, the, the time zone that's, that's true for you where you live for that same time. Okay, and that's when you want to set your intentions. If you do have any questions about that, feel free to reach out to me via email. That's Sonia at astrologercoach.com that's s-o-n-j-a at astrologercoach.com and please remember for this new moon that that we are needing to slow down we're needing to get some rest and quiet time we're needing to release and let go of things and uh, you, you can do that by um, listening or, or watching out for what your dreams are telling you uh, you, you can ask yourself, what, what does my soul need from me? What, what feeds my soul at this time? What feels right? And how can the universe show me the way? How can it support me on this path right now? And really to just kind of open our hearts in, and receive this divine love and support that's all around us all the time. We just need to be open to be, be able to receive it. Because when we are in fear and in doubt, it's very difficult to receive things. So we're really needing to open our hearts so that we can, uh, we can take all this support in that's, that's waiting for us. Waiting for us to open up so that, that it can flow into our lives. Now, uh, one last thing I want to say uh, about this new moon, it's, it's very relevant, is I'm so excited, I already mentioned this in my last uh, video during the full moon, is I will be doing a, a, a retreat in the end of May with a really fantastic uh, woman and, and special friend. Uh, she's called the Rock Whisperer. Her name is Krista Mitchell. And the two of us will do a retreat in Sedona, Arizona in the end of May that is called the Life of the Soul. And it's going to be all about activating and discovering what your soul's journey is, what your soul's purpose is, how to connect to these energies. And it, it's very much about uh, really... Uh, uh, flowing with that with that soul energy and so of course the Pisces new moon is the best time to really uh, align ourselves with that so if you are interested at all in that retreat please feel free to go to my website after March 1st so after the new moon becomes exact uh, at www.astrologercoach.com uh, and if you go to the tab that says uh, Retreat May 2014, this is where you can see all the details, the dates, the times, the price, the, everything that it includes. And it's going to be really a wonderful, wonderful uh, long weekend because it's also the Memorial Day weekend. So uh, feel free to reach out if you have any questions at all about that retreat. And have a fantastic new moon. Remember, this is an introverted time right around the time of the new moon. So go within and tap into this intuition. Tap into this place uh, that, that helps you to, to, um, to, to vocalize some of the intentions that you want to set for this lunar month. All right? So have a good one. This is Astrologer Coach Sonia Francis. And I will see you in a couple of weeks. Bye-bye.